Hello and welcome back. We are today looking at stretching the piriformis with some, some techniques I've found as useful over the years. It's one of these things you probably know if you follow any of my clients online that we don't really use the 90 position that people are a lot of fond of. I use it for certain things, but I don't really find it too useful for stretching the piriformis. It just doesn't give the results I want in the time frames we're looking for. What I'm going to show today is what I consider some techniques that will hopefully supercharge your piriformis stretching and in the sort of short, medium to long term give better results. Other than that, it's up to yourself just to try them out. It's what I find with piriformis stretching more so than anything else is it's very person specific. There's, you'll probably find there might be like 60, 50, 60 different piriformis stretches. You might find like two or three of them are the ones that like really work for you. And the ones that everyone else is going like, this is it, doesn't. So I do encourage you to experiment around and just not take anything for granted. If you're looking for resources or other people to check out this, like Kit Lachlan is my go-to on all these things. And they have, I don't know, 30 different piriformis stretches ranging from like, I haven't touched my toes since I was a child level of stretching all the way to I am a ballerina and it can be professional. So you'll find something in there. But what I'm going to show today is some general concepts that work for most people. I say 80% of the people will be generous. 90% of the people actually. 99%. Anyway, so there's a couple of things. One is we're going to show a posterior hip capsule stretch. Now, a lot of people are they're a bit anterior dominant, I suppose, or this, we want the hip to sit and be centrated a bit better. Now, what will go on in this is, the stretch we're about to demonstrate is, you'll know very quickly whether it works for you. We do this one based on sensation. It will, if you need it, you will have a very strong, kind of nice and enjoyable, but kind of contorted sensation. If it, if you don't need it, you're just going to get nothing out of it. And you can just put an X and go, okay, this is not for me. But if you need it, this stretch, it will, it will tell you whether you need it or not. There's a couple of ways to set it up, but the history of it is basically we were, we were in Thailand, I think, a few years ago, and we were, we were doing some stupid splits, head to toe challenge or something to keep ourselves occupied in the heat. But we both realized that our posterior hip capsule was tight and Playing around, we were finding that the normal posterior hip capsule stretches just, just weren't great. They just weren't doing what we wanted to do. So we kind of workshopped this variant, and Elise will show how she does it. I'll show my one. The concept, the principle is the same. It's just how you do it is a bit different. So Elise is just going to set up now. What we want to do is first, you're going to set up in like, you're probably familiar with this floor basic piriformis stretch. This one, you don't need to cross the leg over. It could be here. And if you're really tight, but you want to cross the leg over, the foot could be off the ground, it's fine. You'll kind of roll into it anyway. But what we want to do is we're going to use gravity and we want to set up in a position that we can hold for quite a long time. Because we're, because we're dealing with connective tissue and joint capsule, we need to start thinking and it's not like performance stretching and we, you know, 30, 40 seconds. We need to be thinking about 90 seconds at a minimum, probably two, three minutes is good. But the good news is it actually improves very quickly. So four or five weeks of this and it's kind of done maybe once a week to top it up. Anyway, so Elisa is going to demonstrate what's going to happen. So in our normal piriformis stretch in this position, the cue is like get the back straight and then rotate around this way and kind of try to keep the spine and get the rotation from the hip. We want a bit of that, but we don't worry too much about the spine position. What's going to happen is we're going to set up into a gentle stretch here and then we're going to go sideways towards the floor to try to get our shoulder to touch somewhere down there. As you can see this way, don't worry too much about what this leg happens. You'll see Elisa needs to hold on here. Can you just demo how you normally would set it up? So she'll normally just hold on to give herself a reduction in it and just kind of hang out. And if you get this right, can you just turn around? We'll get a very deep sensation here. Now you can see we're letting the butt cheek lift. We're not keeping the hip square. It's not just like a normal classic piriformis stretch. You'll know it is right when in this zone here I'm indicating, like right here generally, you'll get a very deep sensation. Is the only way I can describe it. It's very clear if it's something that you might need to do. Other than that, we just want to be comfortable as well. If it's, just turn back around so I can put it there. If it's, you know, too difficult for you to hang out, grab a yoga block or something and just 
stick it under your shoulder. Because we want to we want to be able to spend about two minutes here. <laughs> Don't fall over. You can tell we've rehearsed this. So we'll spend some time here. Two minutes. Watch out for your neck as well. If you're hanging down, it gets uncomfortable. Just do what you need to do to make it comfortable. Get out the padding, get out the cushions, that's fine. So with that in mind, I'll I'm not gonna now my bother demo my own, I'll do the next stuff. So that's our first thing. We're gonna do this for about two minutes. Do it every day for four weeks. You'll notice some changes. So next thing we need to go is can you just turn around for me so I can then just point out the anatomy here? So uh, turn back to the camera. So with the piriformis is, is an interesting thing is that we know the body can suck mobility from one area to another along a chain. You know, the classic example of this is where someone who hinges forward and they extend the neck rather than keeping the chin tucked. We, you've seen this with deadlifts, you've seen this with other things. It can happen on the piriformis as well. This is why I don't like the 1990 and I prefer to do more straight leg variations is the piriformis, if you've ever done any dissection studies, I can remember doing this from a few years ago, is piriformis is here, here on these sides. The fascial chains of the piriformis, if you look at the fiber directions in most people, kind of begin to flow up this way. Uh, it attaches onto the fascial here, onto the glutes, and it kind of makes a sling, a bridge, a sling, as the technical term, I suppose, over the back of the sacrum and connects onto the other one. So we have this internal external rotation couplet if we know the standing piriformis rotation test for more of your physios we know when we turn the hips one leg will internally rotate one leg will externally rotate if we keep the knees forward this is what gives us our rotation we can take advantage of this effect in a piriformis stretch so let's come down this one we can take advantage of this and the way we would do this is we're going to set up the stretch now i'll set it up just to show how we do a bit more remedial one, then I'll show it on the floor. So I'm gonna get some blocks. We need, we need to be well supported along the tie for this to happen. And we need to adjust the height. I like mats like this, because you can just make whatever height you want. Bolsters are fine, cushions are fine. It's also one of these ones you'll find that like, you'll find a height that works for you you'll get some proficiency at it and then once you have it you'll find you're actually very able to quickly transition the floor without needing to sort of reduce it layer by layer so just watch out for that so first thing we need to be aware of is this internal external rotation couplet so i'm going to set up this stretch now i will bias the leg to about 100 degrees of flexion at the knee because when i roll into the stretch i will lose a bit so we want to watch out for that as well it's very important not to lose it the other thing is, that, I'm sure we're familiar with these pigeon stretches, is they just don't, if you keep the leg in here, despite what people say, it just doesn't do the job. It allows too much internal rotation of the femur back to neutral. As you sink into the stretch, the femur itself will rotate around or rotate around the knee. You just think you're getting a stretch. You still feel a stretch in the glutes or the glute med, but it's not hitting the piriformis. It's very clear, there's, a, there's just a night and day difference if you just take the time. It's like a difference between like a three year adventure and a six month adventure. So bear with me on this. Now we do want to make sure the knee is support is not hanging in space. I want to make sure most of my tie is in contact. Now first movement I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward as far as I can. I'm keeping the spine straight, but I'm not worrying too much about like stopping myself. If I go forward a bit, and then I feel I need to round over a small amount just to get comfy. That's fine. Don't worry too much about it. But we do just, we don't want to just go straight over with the top. It's like as much hip as we can. And then we put the last bit in with a bit forward. The other thing is just a small bit of rotation with this shoulder towards the knee. I go down. Now what I'm going to do with my back leg here is I'm just going to walk it backwards. Because I'm going to come up onto the big toe. Now this is where things get important. I'm going to set up the spiral by reaching back with my leg and then internally rotating it. If you get this, the instant you get this, you will feel the stretch get very intense across the piriformis. This is your clue, it's working. So I go forward, 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 set up, push back, and internally rotate hard. This is 
what we're looking for. This will feel very, when you get it right, it'll feel very unique. And that's what we want to go. This is pinning the piriformis into position. So when we actually try to do any mobility work or flexibility work here, it will get the stimulus it needs. Now, I'm just gonna demo the next bit on the floor. So we're gonna look at using the shortening side of the, the joint to actively pull ourselves into the position. Now, if we go too deep into the stretch when we try this, it's gonna be difficult. Your body's gonna be fighting the stretch per se. So we wanna get into the stretch and back out a bit. We're gonna get our friend, Mr. Yoga Block. We're gonna use this. You could also use a foam roller. We just want something that is incredibly solid because we want to like actively pull against something that in an overcoming isometric that will help us then be able to actively pull ourselves deeper. But we need to potentiate the muscle grouping in a more controlled position before we go for the deeper ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'll set up on, which angle, I'll stay at this angle. So I'm gonna set up on the floor. I'm gonna put my leg down, have my block to hand. I'm gonna go back, 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 around, 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 set up. I'm gonna take my block, I'm gonna put it under my rib cage, wherever it is comfortable. Then I'm gonna go down, and now I'm gonna crush the block with all my might, building up over 10 seconds. So we start ramping the contraction, go up, 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 up for about three, four seconds, hold the plateau, possibly crush harder. Then we'll relax for five seconds. We're gonna do this three times. So I'll go down, up on the toe, initiate my spiral, and then crush the block, crush, 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 pull my knee off the ground to my foot, pull my chest towards it, push, 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 relax, do what you gotta do. You might cramp a lot in this. If you do, just come out of the stretch, shake off and go again. Do this again, we'll do that three times. And then we're gonna go down into the stretch and we're just gonna actively keep our spiral going. We're gonna try to hold that for about 30 seconds. So you're gonna spend about 60 seconds in the stretch altogether, working, give it a go. It's fantastic when you get it going. Remember to make adjustments with the height if you need it, up or down, find somewhere you can work comfortably, get the technique right, and then you can work on finding a good depth. Other than that, it's, yeah, I think this stuff is uh, very effective for the piriformis. Try it out. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoy it. Three.